Zach Paykoff here, and welcome back to another lesson video. Today, I will be going over the 2-2 work together. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so as I had stated before, I am going to be going over the 2-2 work together. In the last video, I read over the 2-2 text. If you did miss that video for any reason, please click the link in the description. But anyway, today I will be going over the 2-2 work together where we will be analyzing transactions into debit and credit parts. So the instructions say, T accounts are given in the working papers. Your instructor will guide you through the following examples. Kathy Burgum owns Burgum Services. Burgum Services uses the following accounts. Some of the accounts will be explained in lesson 2-3. All right, so as you can see here, we have a bunch of accounts that are listed. And some of these accounts will be explained and used in lesson 2-3, which is the next lesson. So the accounts that are listed here are cash, accounts receivable, Sam Erickson, supplies, prepaid insurance, accounts payable, bail supplies, Kathy Burgum Capital, Kathy Burgum Drawing, sales, advertising expense, and rent expense. Also, we are given one, two, three, four, five transactions, and in addition to that, the instructions also say, for number one, to prepare two T accounts for each transaction. On each T account, write the account title of one of the accounts affected by the transaction. And for number two, it says to write the debit or credit amount in each T account to show the transaction's effect. All right, so I have already created and copied and pasted the T accounts in Google Sheets. So that way you don't have to see me creating them and copying and pasting them over and over again. I have also typed in the date, so that way we know which transaction is which. Okay, so now let's get right into the transactions for this work together. So this first transaction reads, on April 1st, received cash from owner as an investment, $5,000. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is figure out what accounts are being affected here. So when we receive cash from the owner as an investment, the two accounts that are being affected are cash and also the owner's capital account, which is Kathy Burgum Capital. All right, next we have to determine what account gets debited and what account gets credited. So the transaction read that we received cash from the owner as an investment and the amount was $5,000. So anytime that we receive cash, that means that our cash account is going up or being increased. So for this transaction, what we're gonna do is first we are going to debit $5,000 for cash, and then we're gonna credit the same amount, $5,000 for the owner's capital account. Now, if you remember from when I read over the 2-2 text, both of these accounts are being increased. That's because since cash is an asset, it increases by a debit and decreases by a credit. Whereas on the flip side for the owner's capital account, the owner's capital account is part of owner's equity. So that means it increases by a credit and decreases by a debit. All right, so that was the first transaction. The next transaction reads, on April 2nd, paid cash for supplies, $50. Okay, so again, the first thing that we have to do is figure out what accounts are being affected here. So when we pay cash for supplies, the two accounts that are being affected here are cash and also supplies. The next thing that we have to do is determine what account gets debited and what account gets credited. So the transaction read that we paid cash for supplies and the amount was $50. So what we're going to so any time that we pay cash for something, that means that our cash account is going down or being decreased. So for this transaction, what we're going to do is first we're going to debit $50 for supplies and then we're going to credit cash for the same amount, which is 
Now, for this transaction, we have an increase and a decrease. That's because since these accounts are both assets, they increase by a debit and decrease by a credit. But since we have paid cash for supplies, our supplies account is going up or being increased, and our cash account is going down or being decreased. Okay, so that was transaction number two. Transaction number three reads, on April 5th, paid cash for insurance, $75. All right, so again, the first thing that we're going to do is determine what accounts are being affected here. So when we pay cash for insurance, the two accounts that are being affected here are cash and also prepaid insurance. Okay, next we have to determine what account gets debited and what account gets credited. So the transaction read that we paid cash for insurance and the amount was $75. So again, anytime that we pay cash for something, that means that our cash account is going down or being decreased. So for this transaction, what we're gonna do is we are going to debit $75 for prepaid insurance, and then we're going to credit cash for the same amount. Now again, for this transaction, we have an increase and a decrease. So since these accounts are both assets, they increase by a debit and decrease by a credit. But again, if you remember, since we have paid cash for insurance, our insurance account is going up or being increased, and our cash account is going down or being decreased. All right, so that was transaction number three. Transaction number four reads, on April 6th, bought supplies on account from bail supplies, $100. Okay, so again, the first thing that we have to do is determine what accounts are being affected here. So when we buy supplies on account from bail supplies, the two accounts that are being affected here are supplies and also accounts payable bills supplies. Okay, next we have to determine what account gets debited and what account gets credited. So the transaction read that we bought supplies on account from bail supplies and the amount was $100. So when we buy supplies on account, that means that our supplies account is going up or increasing. So for this transaction, we're going to debit $100 for supplies, and then we're gonna credit accounts payable bail supplies. Now, for this transaction, as I read in the 2-2 text, both of these accounts are being increased. That's because since supplies is an asset, it increases by a debit and decreases by a credit. Whereas on the flip side for accounts payable bail supplies, accounts payable is a liability. So that means that it increases by a credit and decreases by a debit. Okay, so that was transaction number four. And finally, the last transaction, which is transa transaction number five reads, on April 9th, paid cash on account to bail supplies, $50. Okay. So again, the first thing that we have to do is figure out what accounts are being affected here. So when we pay cash on account to bail supplies, the two accounts that are being affected here are cash and also accounts payable, bails, oh, supplies. Okay. Okay. Next, we have to determine what account gets debited and what account gets credited. So the transaction read that we paid cash on account to bail supplies, and the amount was $50. So again, anytime that we pay cash for something, that means that our cash account is going down or being decreased. So what we're going to do is we're going to debit accounts payable bail supplies for $50. And then we're going to credit cash for the same amount, which is $50. Now, for this transaction, both of these accounts are being decreased. That's because since cash is an asset, it increases by a debit and decreases by a credit. Whereas on the flip side for accounts payable bail supplies, accounts payable is a liability. 
So that means that it increases by a credit and decreases by a debit. All right, so that is transaction number five, and it's also the end of the 2-2 work together. So in the next video, I will be going over the 2-3 text. All right, thank you.